Cycling and its most controversial moments. So after a little vacation, like Chris Froome in Israel, you demanded the return of cycling stories, and we are back. If you want more educational videos like this, then don't forget to give the thumbs up to the video. Let's see if you're able to exceed 2000 likes. And now, without further ado, let the show begin. Richard Carapaz and the Government of Ecuador Any cycling fan knows that the favourite for the Giro d'Italia for the Ineos team, Richard Carapaz, is one of the best climbers in the world. Podium in the three Grand Tours, winner of the Tour of Switzerland and the current Olympic champion. The Locomotora del Carci did not hesitate to talk about the poor support shown by the government of his country to athletes, who, like him, had to go to Spain to carve out their future as sportsmen or women. Casi sin el apoyo del país, el país nunca creyó en mí, y la verdad que esto yo lo disfruto, ¿no? Porque esto me pertenece. The controversy became a viral issue in Ecuador and Richie's words have served to incentivize politicians to invest more public money into this beautiful sport and to develop it in Latin America. The simple fact that structures as powerful as Ineos participate in the national championships of Ecuador, where Carapaz was gold against the clock, is a sign of this. It seems that his words at least have served for something. Mark Padun, the radioactive man. Only the real experts truly knew of this Ukrainian cyclist before June 2021, despite having shone in lower categories and even finishing second in a stage of the Giro d'Italia in 2020. However, hardly anyone expected this nice young man to be able to destroy the biggest names in the peloton in two consecutive mountain stages. And no, we're not talking about the Nokeri Corisse or even the Grand Prix Miguel in the rain. No, no more and no less did he pull out this show in the middle of the Criterium de Dauphiné, with two such legendary exhibitions that made us think that we were witnessing the very reincarnation of Emmanuel Asselier, the little cycling golem himself. That hard currency that he put down on the most difficult ramps and the crazy ways of celebrating his triumphs made us think that something strange was going on. And some of his rivals denounced those performances in the French press. The uproar about Padoun's alleged doping was so great that Bahrain Victorious did not want to field him for the Tour de France, which took place only two weeks later. After that performance, this little man has been relegated to oblivion. They did not renew his contract at Bahrain and he is signed for Education First, where he has only won one stage, against the clock in the prestigious O Gran Camino race. Uh, undoubtedly it is to see this man and to remember legends like Vladimir Pulinko. Lance Armstrong and the engines. For some followers of this humble channel, the US postal gringo is the best cyclist of all time. We don't know if this is indeed so or not, but there must be something about this man when you consider that he's still in the news 10 years after his doping confession on Oprah's TV show. Recently, a new cheating allegation has come to light, which if true, would make him a pioneer in cycling. Analysts observed several time trials of the American cyclists, and they noticed that Armstrong repeatedly hits his hand on the saddle. Many would think that he simply wanted to position himself aerodynamically on the bike, but experts say that what the former seven-time Tour de France champion was doing was activating a small motor embedded in the bike and one that would let him go much faster than his rivals, with less effort. La Lanza has not confirmed this, but neither has he denied it. Could he have been cheating with motors like some say did Classico Mano Luigi? Women Cycling and YouTube Surely many of you are far from this controversy because you don't follow women's sport or because you're not real men of culture. However, this time we're not talking about competition, but about this platform from which I am talking to you and which, fortunately or unfortunately, I know all too well. Since about a year ago, YouTube has begun to belittle women 
In particular, by removing the monetization of videos in which they appear in clothes that do not fit the parameters of elegance of the 19th century. In cycling stories, we have seen how many female cyclists have lost the monetization of their videos for not wearing high collars on their jerseys. Quite curious when you consider that it's precisely the platform itself that considers itself feminist, isn't it? Crashes of the last Tour de France the most popular cycling race in the world has been in the eye of controversy for some rather peculiar routes, especially in its first week, with many traps and downhill routes near the finish lines and in stages in which they are going at very high speed. There were very important casualties within the bunch, such as the 2018 winner Geraint Thomas, the Australian sprinter Caleb Ewan, and especially one of the main favourites, the Slovenian Primoz Roglic. In addition to the possible failures of the organisation, there are also those that are caused by the spectators themselves, such as the mythical and the infamous Opiyami fan, the anti-satanic woman who preferred to be looking at nothing than at the road, and ending Tony Martin's dream of being a professional cyclist. It's exactly for destroying the preparation of several sportsmen that she was punished by the French justice system. And she'll have to go to jail, so don't be dumb and dumber, and simply encourage the cyclists. The Jumbo Visma Ketones The Dutch team has been riding at an absolutely miraculous level for several seasons now, with riders like Sepp Kuss, Jonas Vingegaard, Christophe Laporte, and especially their two big stars, Primus Roglic and Wout van Aert, and all of these performing at a superlative level and on all types of terrain. However, these great performances have also been surrounded by some controversy, and primarily due to the use of ketones by the yellow cyclists. This substance is not banned by the UCI, but according to some doctors, it can end up causing long-term damage to the athlete's health, which they say could be the cause of Roglic's recent knee injuries. The use of ketones by some teams will give certain advantages in the endurance of the riders, something that has been noticed in the case of teams like Arkea Samsic, of Nairo Quintana, who even publicly complained about the use of ketones, and who now seems to have included them in his diet to greatly improve his performance at the beginning of the 2022 season. Well, who do you think is right? Leave it in the comments, and we'll see you in the next show. And don't forget to subscribe. And here, don't forget to subscribe.